So guys, today we'll be talking about Life is Strange, which is one of my favorite games of all time, so let's talk about it. So as I said in the intro, yes, today we'll be talking about Life is Strange, which I did say is one of my favorite games of all time. I played this back in 2018, around the same time that I played Splinter Cell Blacklist. If you do actually want to hear my thoughts about that game, I will leave a link in the description down below. Uh, but yeah, uh, I played this close to when a friend played it. We kind of played it together, so we kind of bounced ideas off of each other and stuff. But yeah, going into this game, I had no clue that it was even a choice game. I was familiar with the genre. I played Minecraft Story Mode, The Walking Dead stuff. But honestly, if I had to choose, I definitely would take this game, Life is Strange, over any of the Telltale stuff. I just, I do enjoy the Telltale stuff. I'm not trying to disregard it at all. But I definitely do think that Life is Strange is the better of the uh, two or guess multiple telltale stuff and then and the life is strange at least before the storm i haven't played the second one the first one and the before the storm but i haven't played the second one so yeah actually talking about the game itself i definitely think it is really well done there's kind of two storylines going on here there's the uh whole plot line with rachel amber which is definitely my favorite this is probably the best for me i really got invested into this storyline itself and really enjoyed this the one whole about saving arcadia bay and like oh guys a tornado is coming and stuff I did not really like that. It just felt like kind of like another thing. It's like to add to Max's issues. I wasn't a big fan of it. Thankfully, the game doesn't really focus too much on it, at least at least not until the end of the game. But yeah, I definitely do prefer the Rachel Amber story side. And one of the things I do want to talk about is one of the twists in the game is, oh my gosh, the Mark Jefferson, Max's teacher, was actually uh, like, he's kind of like the guy responsible for all like, for Rachel going missing and like all these other cases that were kind of happening. Uh, did anyone else expect this? Did anyone else see this coming? I've heard mixed things online. Like, I've heard some people say, oh yeah, I totally saw this coming. I've heard other people saying, nope, didn't see it. My friend did see it coming. Uh, he said, like, dude, you didn't see that coming? It's like, no. Uh, but yeah, it's like, I did not see it coming personally, which I think definitely made the experience a lot better for me. Uh, but yeah, because this game, this game's an emotional game. Like, if I could replay a game again, this would be the game I'd replay because my first time, there was a lot of emotions going with this. It, like, it, it was an amazing feeling playing this, but there was like ups, there was downs, like there was a lot of different emotions going through me my first time playing Life is Strange, so yeah. But I did not see the uh, Mark Jefferson uh, thing coming in. I did not see that coming, but when it did come in, it's like, and I did go on replay, I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah, totally. And one of the scenes I do want to highlight is the scene in the classroom, which is like the very first scene. It was like, if I could put any of you in a dark corner, it's like, I did not notice that first, but honestly, I was probably just like Max, it's probably just dazing off. Okay, man, cool lecture. What did you even say? <laughs> uh, so yeah, I guess I didn't really pay attention to the dialogue stuff, maybe that's why. But yeah, I didn't actually, uh, I didn't really notice that and catch those like little hints and stuff, but I definitely, now going back, I definitely do love the foreshadowing that does lead up until the reveal in episode four. Talking a little bit more about episode four. Episode four, is really well done aside from the parallel universe part there is a part in this game where it does like put max into a parallel universe if she saved chloe's dead personally that never worked for me it kind of just took me out of the story but everything else in episode four is really well done especially this one puzzle there's a lot of puzzles in this game but there is this one that i do really want to mention and it's this puzzle where it feels almost like a crime show or like a crime uh, film it's like you kind of have to put all these pieces together. It's really well done. I've never done this without a YouTube video. Every time it comes up, it's like, oh, it's this one. Hey all, YouTube here. And I always have to pull up a YouTube video to do it. So in my opinion, episodes one to three are perfection for me. Episodes four is pretty good aside. Same with three, three has the issues. One thing, anything with a parallel universe, not my thing, doesn't work for me. You might feel differently, but for me, it definitely didn't work for me. And then five, five is the one that I have the most issues with because I think five starts off really strong and it ends really strong. But my problem is this little bridge section between the uh, beginning of uh, episode five and then the end of episode five. Because episode five, I love, love the beginning part where it's like Max goes through all these different like parallel universes and she's like, 
okay, what happens if I do this or if I do that? And then she realizes towards the end, it's like, I can't have both. I can't save Arcadia Bay and I can't save Chloe, which is, I'll talk about that a little bit more later. But yeah, I definitely do like how the how it starts and how it ends. I definitely do like that part that I just mentioned. But then there's this really weird nightmare sequence that honestly, I'm still confused about why it's there. I never really understood it, honestly, for me. But yeah, it is there. And honestly, I never really liked the nightmare sequence. It felt weird and off to me. It doesn't feel like it connects with everything else. It just feels like there's a bridge and then it just like happens. It's like, it doesn't really work well for me. I, I don't know, it just never worked for me. I think I'd rather just cut it entirely, maybe have like a little bit of connection between uh, beginning and like the uh, end of it. And then that would be my perfect thing. It's like just no nightmare sequence. Uh, it's a little bit stuff to connect the two uh, parts there. And on another note, can we seriously just take a moment to appreciate both the original score for this game and all the songs that were chosen for this game? Everything just fits perfectly and it, I never felt like any song doesn't really go with anything because they all really do fit and feel the theme of Life is Strange. I love how they chose a bunch of different indie artists, which is really cool. But yeah, I think the part that I do definitely really like about this game is the characters in the game itself. Every character, at least like every like kind of important character, like, you know, this guy who I don't even think he has a name, he's not that interesting. But like, I think every other character has their moments. They're interesting in their own respect. I think the most interesting characters is Chloe and Max, but all the other characters are very interesting, like Warren, Victoria, Mark Jefferson, like they're all interesting in their own ways. Like they aren't the most deep, but I definitely do think that they have their moments where they can be very captivating characters, but Max and Chloe, and it makes sense. The game is focused around their relationship. They are the most captivating characters overall throughout the whole game. I want to talk about Max first. I'll talk about Chloe later, but I find Max is the, my, she's my favorite character and I find her just be Holly because I relate to her on a level and I find that she's the most relatable. I know everyone always talks about this one scene. Looking yeah. sick, Max. A couple tats, some piercings, and we'll make a thrasher out of you yet. Ready for the mosh pit, Shaka Bra. Maybe not. It's like everyone always makes fun of that scene. It's like, who says that? Guilty as charged. I probably wouldn't say the exact thing. At least not the same thing pre Liz, uh, but I might say it after playing the game. Uh, but yeah, I would probably say something stupid in that scenario. I probably would say something incredibly stupid like Max did. So I think that is why I definitely do like her is because I feel like can connect with her. Max is also the reason why I actually got into photography. It was because of this game and her character. I just like, hey, that's a cool hobby. So I started trying it out as like, I never really had an appreciation for it before until playing this game, but I'm so glad that I did because it's such a cool hobby. It's like a really part that I do enjoy of my life now. Now, one of the unique things that this game gives you is that it gives you the option to rewind. So basically you can use it to solve puzzles in certain cases, but the most common use of it is when you make a choice, you can always choose to rewind and say, hey, do I really want to do this? And you can kind of see all the different options. The one time that this is taken away though, and I really love this, is in the scene where you basically have to stop Kate from committing suicide. And it's really cool, you basically just have to make all the choices, you cannot rewind, so it's either you do this now or you don't do it. It's one of my favorite character moments for Max because it shows, even with her powers, she's really not that invincible. On the first time though, sadly, I did actually end up losing Kate, but on the second time, I wanted to see what happened, so I ended up Googling, how do you save Kate? So yeah, but I think one of my favorite uh, moments in the game is Chloe's character, and it's specifically the end of it, and it's almost how tragic she is, it's how tragic her character is written, because no matter what ending you choose, you can either choose the Bay or Bay ending, wait, hold up, those are the same words now, you can either choose uh, the save Chloe ending, or you sacrifice Chloe ending. If you sacrifice her, well, she doesn't know that Max really did care about her, and she doesn't get to make, like, like, you know, she doesn't really get to make ends with her family. And then if you do choose to end up saving Chloe, well, she does have Max there, which I guess is a little bit on a brighter note, but she doesn't really get to make ends with her family and, like, doesn't really get to, like, you know, say, hey, I'm, I'm sorry for all the crap that I put up with you guys. It's like, she doesn't really get to do, like, that because, like, which, it does, it does feel very tragic. It's like, it, her character, so. I definitely do appreciate that level of her. But those are my thoughts on Life is Strange. Have you guys played the game? What do you guys think of it? Uh, tell me in the comments down below. 
If you did enjoy this video, thanks for watching. And until next time, guys, I'll see you guys later. And peace out.